Is it okay right now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, ma'am. You are audible. Oh, okay. Yes. So we had been talking about the for the online uh, students. We have been talking about the previous class discussion that we have uh, discussed the author journal, uh, author level metrics, journal level metrics, as well as what was the another one? Article level. Oh, a sound she learned. Thank you. Thank you. So today we are going to discuss about, we will discuss, we will discuss uh, as you have in your uh, uh, routine and syllabus, we will cover the site score information metrics, SNP, SCR, IPP, site score GHI index. So first we will go through the definition and then we will, uh, I'll show you uh, how you will choose the journal with the highest impact factor for uh, choosing the topics for your research. And when you are uh, polished in the article publication, which uh, journal you will choose for your publication so that you will get more and more citations. So we were talking about the impact factor. It is a measure of the frequency with which the average article has been cited in a particular year. And the impact factor has been calculated for the last two years. And we are not going to calculate the impact factor, but the different databases, they are catching the data and they are providing the impact factor ready made to us. But for our knowledge, the calculation is given on the screen. You can have a look. So calculation of impact factor of a journal for 2010, if we are calculating the impact factor of a journal in 2010, so suppose that A is the number of times the article has been published in 2008 and 9. They were cited by index journal during 2010. And B is the total number of citable items. Okay. So A divided by B, that is the impact factor. So impact factor is reported in JCR. Previous class, I had shown you the JCR, General Citation Report. Now, another term which is site score is somehow similar to the impact factor, but there are some differences between the impact factor and site score. Impact factor is calculated for the two years, previous two years and published in the next year. But site score is the ratio of citation to research published and it is calculated for the last four years. Impact factor for two years and site score for the last four years. What is site score? It is the ratio of citations to research published. Earlier what we see the number of articles published divided by the number of citation received. Right, that was the impact factor. But site score is something reverse. That is citations, ratio of the citations to the research published. It is currently available for journals and book series which are indexed in Scoopus. You have gone through the Scoopus. There were some classes on Scoopus, so you have accommodated to that. So site score consider all content published in a journal and not just articles and reviews. So it has a much broader uh, scope than that of impact factor. Impact factor are calculating on basis of articles and journals. It is providing the impact factor of journal and it is calculating on the basis of articles, right? The articles which have more citations, but site is good, they are covering the book series also. Not only articles, they are covering the book series, book reviews, so, they have more broader aspect. Society score was produced by Scoopers in two, uh, December 2016, and one can easily replicate it via Scooper database. So this uh, site score is provided by Scoopers database. In addition to site score, Scooper also published additional rankings such as site score percentile. There are some more advanced metrics provided by Scoopers apart from site score. Site score percentile, subject category, monthly site score tracker, these are also available, right? We are bothered about the basic site score definition and how it is different from impact factor. The site score calculation again, 
we had done the impact factor calculation of a journal. Now the site scope calculation, how to do this? So number of all citations recorded in Scoopus in one year to content published in Journal X to the last three years, divided by the total number of items published in Journal X in the previous three years. So journals that publish a large amount of matter will perform worse by the site scope because the ratio has been reversed. And when we are coming to the H index, that will uh, tell you the more and more article you publish, the more the H index will go. Difference between the site score and impact factor. Site score is based on Scoopers database rather than Web of Science. We uh, I shown you the Web of Science previous class. So this school site score is much more broader score because Web of Science are covering the science subjects mainly. And school, uh, site score uh, through the scoopers, they are covering much more broader scope. So this means the number of citation and journal coverage in subject certain subject area is notably higher. Site score uses three year citation window, whereas impact factor uses two year citation window. In the last two years, how many articles has been cited that will be calculated in impact factor, but in site score for the last three years, how many citations divided by the research publications is the site score. The site score denominator, denominator includes all content published in the journal and the impact factor denominator articles. Online participant, please uh, mute yourself. So site score cover all subject area, whereas impact factor is only available for journal indexing, SS, SCI, SSCI. So what are the tools to measure the journal impact factor? So journal citation report I shown you, that is, that will help us to measure the journal impact factor. But as I told you, the journal impact factor are ready uh, made available to us through the Scoopers and Web of Science. This is another term, a SNP, in your uh, syllabus. What is a SNP? Source normalized impact per paper. So SNP is a journal level metric, which attempt to correct the subject specific characteristics. Simplifying the cross-discipline comparison between the journals. There are some publication which have cross-discipline or interdisciplinary subjects. So whenever we are publishing such interdisciplinary article, so different interdisciplinary subjects and interdisciplinary journals are available. But this SNIP, Source Normalized Impact Per Paper, what they are doing, they are segregating the subject by segregation they are doing, right? So how it is going to help? SNP is a journal level metric which attempt to correct subject specific characteristics, simplifying the cross-discipline comparison between the journal. It measures the citation received against citation expected for the subject field. Suppose uh, as a student, when we are going to our parents with our report card, they are saying we were expecting much more, right? So this expectation, this SNP is saying that what is expected from that journal source, what is expected citation and what it has acquired, that ratio is the SNP what is acquired, what marks it has obtained, and what it has, what was expected. Suppose a student has uh, obtained 80%, but the parents were uh, expecting 90%. So 80 divided by 90 is SNIP. In case of journals, it measures the citation received against the citation expected. What kind of citation it has received, that means from the previous record, what we are expecting from that journals, how much citation it has 
used to receive and now how much it has been it has obtained number of citation it has received against the citation it has been expected that is school for that subject field in some subject field the citation is much more higher particularly in science subjects right so using a scoopers data this snip is measuring the citation received against the citation expected that is called the snip in simple nutshell one sentence definition so snip is published twice a year and looks at three year period so looking at the three year databases it is published twice a year suppose it has been published in january then again in july twice in a year the snip calculation is journal citation count per paper divided by citation potential in the field the number citation count per paper divided by the citation potential how much potential it had the student had the potential to obtain 90% but it has obtained 80% so 80 divided by 90 is marks obtained divided by expectation right that is the snip so snip normalizes its source to allow for cross disciplinary comparison it in practice this mean that a citation from a publication with long reference list has a lower value in the previous class when we were talking about the mendeley we have i had shown you in ms word that when we are suppose a particular sentence against that i was um, citing some author and again the list was prepared the reference list was there so citation is something different and reference list is something different so this snip is saying that any article any publication with a long reference list it will have a lower value in snip why because they are saying that you have collected mostly from the other sources you are preparing such a long reference list that means you are extracting mostly ideas where is your own idea what is your creativity what is your innovation you have just gathered the references you have collected the ideas from different persons and you have prepared the article right so this is snip is saying that in snip calculation publication with a long reference list will have a lower value so snip only consider the citation to specific content type article review and conference paper when we are giving the citation the snip is only considering which one the article reviews and the conference paper they are not considering the book book series and any other thing and does not uh, count citation from publication that is scoopers classify as non citing sources scoopers has given a list that is non citing resources sources so snip is deleting those references these include trade journal many arts and humanities title trade journals are uh, arts and humanities title are not calculated by snip so snip is clear to all of you impact factor cite score snip we have covered is it clear any doubt any confusion regarding these things so next we are moving to sky skimago journal rank sgr the sgr aim to capture the effect of subject field how this subject field has any effect that is captured by the sgr sgr aim to capture the effect of subject field quality and reputation of journal on citation based on citation what is the effect of that subject field what is the quality and reputation of journal it calculate the percentage of journal by considering the value of sources that cite it so where from you are citing what sources you are been using considering the value of those sources and uh, counting all citations equally the sgr is preparing our database
So each citation received by a journal is assigned a weight based on SGR of the citing journal. So a citation from a journal with high SGR value is worth more than a citation for a journal with low SGR value. So journal has been ranked in Schemago journal rank. You had seen the master journal list in the web of science. So this is another database, Schemago journal rank. They are preparing a journal based on how this journal is capturing this particular subject field. So how they are calculating each citation received by journal is assigned a weight based on SGR of the citing journal. How we are doing the SGR calculation? The average number of weighted citation in a given year to journal X divided by the number of article published in the journal X in the previous year. Suppose we are taking one journal that is called journal X. We are not naming physics review, nature, something like that. We are saying journal X. So in case of journal X, how many citation, average number of citations in a given year in particular journal divided by the number of article published in the previous three years. So all these things are intermingling, right? Impact factor, site score, uh, that, uh, but they have different meaning, the different databases, the different uh, ranking is there. Some journal are ranked by Schemago journal rank. Some are ranked by site scoopers, that is site score. Some are ranked by web of science, that is impact factor. So different databases are there. They are ranking the journal according to their uh, value. So as with SNP and site score, SGR is calculated using scoopers data. So I will provide this uh, materials to our coordinator, sir. He will provide you everything through the mail. So once you go through it, you will find there are, they have their own, this particular terms, they have their own meanings, their own advantages. I have given you the differences between the impact factor and site score. So these things are different. And when I'll show you in the practical, you will see the, these things, the differences between things will be quite visible. Now the H index. The H index we are calculating on a particular author. The number of articles published. Just imagine the capital H, the number of articles published and the number of citation received. If they are equal, then the H is coming. Imagine the capital H, the number of articles published and the number of citation received. When they are coming together in a graph that is forming a capital H, that is given the H index. Suppose in case of uh, the author who are producing more and more, more and more articles throughout the year, consistency is there, right? Consistency is there, more production is there, more articles is there. And when the citation is high, equal to their production, the number of articles published and the number of citation is equal, that is called, that is forming the H index. In some cases, what happened that some author, they are producing good articles, but not in quantity, not throughout the year, not throughout the, um, their career, but once in a year or twice in a year, but quality paper, they have been citation but when the number of articles is increased and equal is the number of citation. Both of them are matching, that is forming the capital H. Okay, that is the H index and this is the calculation of author matrix. That is, we are calculating the output of the author. I have talked about the Vidwan database that experts have been chosen. In with one database, you will see the H index, particular author, how many H index he has, he or she has, I will show you. So on a, let's discuss the H index. It is given in small h, but just to memorize, just for your memory, to, for your output in exam or any interview, remember the capital H, the numbers of article published and the number of citation received that when they are coming equal in a graph that is forming the capital H 
that is H index. Another commonly used matrix is H index. The H index quantifies the individual scientific research output. It measures the productivity of a researcher and the citation impact of their publications. Productivity of a researcher and the citation impact of their publication. Not only the quality is to be there, citation has to be there. The H index can be found on citation databases and Google X Scholar. The H index is usually we find on the different citation database and Google Scholar with one database mainly extracting the data from Google Scholar. For example, to calculate the H index, an author's paper are ranked from highest number of citation to lowest. Suppose any author, he had got the highest citation, 30 citation for any paper right then 20 then 10 then 15 likewise highest to lowest when we are ranking the papers the author's paper calculate the h index author's paper are ranked from highest number of citation to the lowest on the web of science you do this by creating a citation report for the author these h index are ready made available and if you want to know if you want to clear your concept this graph is there this is the number of citation and this are the publications. When the number of papers and number of citation, they are coming at the highest peak, that is the citation, H citation, H index is there. And this one is more than H citation. So number of articles published and number of citation received when they are equalizing, that is forming the H index. The H index is the number of articles in the collection H that have received at least H citation in the whole period. And the author has an H index of 61. If an author has a H index of 61, that means the H index of 61 means that they have published at least 61 papers that have received at least 61 citations. Both are equal. The H index is shown at the type of citation report. Uh, I will show you in the practical and the graph shows a typical author productivity over time. The desired trend is upward. Okay. Impact per publication. The impact per publication is, uh, so H index is uh, clear to all of you. Impact per publication. The impact per publication calculated as the number of citations given in the present year publication in by the total number of publication in the past three years. So number of citation given in present year publication to the last total number of publication in the last three years. It is similar to well-known journal impact factor. In case of impact factor of a journal, what we are doing, we are calculating for the last few years and the impact per uh, publication means for the last three years, how many citation it has received. Like the journal impact factor, IPP does not correct the difference in citation practice between scientific fields. IPP was previously known as raw impact per publication. So number of citation in the last three years, what you have received divided by the number of publication last three years will give you the impact per publication. That is average calculated, which was earlier known as raw impact per publication. <clears throat> now coming to the G index. This uh, I had given, uh, someone was asking for the slide. Had he gone through the slides? I had given him some links. 
because we don't have enough time so i'm not sharing any slide but very uh, um, infinite number of slides are available on journal impact factor and these topics if you want to see you can see someone has taken the link i don't know whether he has gone through or not so this scientist uh, this g index was proposed by leo igi in his paper theory and practice of g index we have covered the h index now we are coming to the g index and then we have i index and something more so what is g index this scientist he was responsible or he has proposed this g index in his paper he has published a paper theory and practice of g index in 2006 as an improvement to h index he wanted to improve the h index so he proposed g index what is g index the g index gives more weight to highly cited articles from beginning to last we are uh, calculating the citation sometime we are calculating the citation of journal sometime author h index is the author number of citation an author has been received and now this g index again it has been modified to it has been modified by leo e to provide or some more development of h index so g index gives more weight to highly cited articles to calculate the g index <clears throat> suppose a given set of article is there rank in decreasing order of citation decreasing order of citation 10 9 8 7 such as the g index is unique large largest number such as top g article received together at least g2 citations so um, given articles number of decreasing order of citation they have received what is g index the g index is the largest number such that on the top of g articles they have received we have done h uh, index what the author has received now the g index they are calculating the g index and keeping the articles in decreasing order of citation so what is the advantage of g index it accounts for the performance of authors top article g index has been developed by this scientist in 2006 he wanted to improve the h index h index means what the author's productivity is number of citation he has received and number of productivity articles when they are matching that is forming capital h that is h index now this g index they are telling that given a set of articles suppose any author he has 10 articles and number of, they have been arranged in order of number of citation decreasing order of citations so i'll show you this graph this y axis we have average number of citation and this x axis they have first g papers so the number of citations and this is it visible this 10 is visible to you 10 is visible Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So yes, after ten, yes, between ten and twenty, this G index is eleven for this particular author. Where this is the number of average number of citation, this uh, axis and this axis, x axis, where we are coming to the eleven G eleven. This is the number of us G papers. So according to number of citation, his paper has been set. and this g11 is telling the g index of this particular author so how this g index is improved according uh, much more advantage to h index how it is it has advantage so what is does it account for the performance of authors top articles suppose some author is there whose top articles they are extracting the top articles the g index is providing the top article of any author they help to make more apparent the difference between author respective impact 
and the inflated values of the G index help to give credit to lowly, uh, lowly cited or non-cited paper by giving credit for highly cited paper. As highly cited paper are on above and they are ranked or articles are arranged according to highly cited paper then lower cited paper. So this G index will tell the top article first and then the low cited article at the end. What is the disadvantage? Introduced in 2007 and the debate continues whether G index is superior to H index and it is not widely accepted as the H index. So H index is more widely accepted than the G index and the debate is going on. Which one is superior or which one is more helpful, right? We will move to I-10 index. So we are all uh, know the Charles Darwin. So I said earlier that these indexes are provided ready-made are available. So origin of species, his book, origin of species, how many times it has been cited? 29,614 times it has been cited since 1978. So this amount of citation he has received. This amount of citation he has received. The H index is 98, I-10 index is 462. Then we come to the I-10 index. What is I-10 index? It is a metric used by Google Scholar. There are different metrics, different by different databases, right? We have done a scoopers web of science. Now the I-10 index, what they do? H index, G index we have done. This I-10 index is calculated by Google Scholar. They are preparing the I index of any particular author. What they are doing? Used by Google Scholar is the number of publication with at least 10 citations number of publication, suppose there is one publication, it must be having at least 10 citation. Any particular paper having 10 citation, all the citation listed in the profile. This is a very simple metric to calculate, but it is only available in Google Scholar. The Google Scholar page is showing both H index and I-10 index. So it is very simple, any publication, number of publication with at least 10 citations will be calculated as I-10 index. That means I-10 index is 462. <clears throat> That means 462 publication have at least 10 citation. They can have more than 10 citation, but at least 10 citation. Now I'll show you the impact factor of journals. So I hope I have covered all the topics, all the metrics we had covered earlier also. You have the syllabus or routine with you. So anything left, please point out if anything has been left. So what is the practical approach of this uh, two-day lecture? How we are going to choose the journals for our research? Which journal we should choose? And in case of publication, which journal we would like to publish so that we get more and more citations? First of all, we are uh, going to the scoopers. Suppose I particular subject area, I choose physics. 
So what are the journals available in this particular area? So all results are coming. I'm bothered about the journal impact factor, which journals are have more impact factor so that for my research, I want to extract from nascent information from those journals. So have a look on the impact factor. Is it visible to all of you? What is the impact factor of this physics reports? What is the impact factor? 30.51. That is the impact factor of this physics reports. The name of the journal is physics reports. So in case if I'm a student of physics and will choose this physics reports, obviously. Can you see the chemical physics impact factor 2.552? So how far they are? What is the impact factor of a journal that tell how much citation they are receiving, how much popular it has, what kind of nascent information they will provide, nascent authentic information. So obviously I go for physics report. So what we have been these two years, uh, last two classes what is impact factor of journal how to find this is this is on physics another journal physics open it has snip sgr is given given astroparticle physics impact factor 2.5 any other subjects Nine point two three one, three point nine nine four, five point three zero seven. A marking the good type of cases. Any other subject suggestions from you? Ma'am, history. Agriculture. So agriculture impact factor is there. 6.57, 6.76, 4.38. 6.57 of the different journals are available 6.61 6.4 so these are the impact factor snp sgr is there so what else you want for science Ma'am, Hindi. Sure, one by one. Ma'am, education. So this is the way how you can search for your own. The journals you can now search. Now you can are able to choose the journal with high impact factor to capture the information for your research purposes. So according to your need, you can search 
as you want we have a limited time for our class it's already 11:26 i will show you the g index and h index so based on this so based on this matrix all these metric based on this matrix what web of science do they are preparing the whole world scenario whole world scenario means the researchers from the whole world who are the top researcher in the whole world country wise institution wise means so they have prepared a data every year they are preparing <clears throat> so who are the most highly cited researcher in the whole world who are the highly cited researcher from the country and which institution they are producing such research they have prepared a data so this is the captured and prepared by web of science esi means essential science field so in case of science field the in case of agriculture subject wise the agriculture sciences they have number of highly cited researchers 116 researchers are there in biology and chemistry 303 clinical medicine 466 so on so number of highly cited researcher in 2022 because we are preparing this data based on the previous year records so web of science what they did they have prepared a data and which country tops in case of this united state with 2764 highest cited researchers that means the research work the published work of this country is getting much more citation people are referring their article okay so what is the world share 38.3% of the research article is coming from the usa then comes the china with 1169 they are contributing to 16.2% united kingdom is there germany australia canada so among the top 10 we are not there so what according to the institution the institution which are producing much more research data the articles producing by these researcher which are highly cited hcr means highly cited researcher so harvard university united state they are pro uh, producing 233 researchers they have been highly cited then come the chinese academy of science china mainland stanford university so according to organization they are there where i have captured this data from i told you in your previous class also that our university library are acquiring very expensive software one of them is web of science this data has been captured by web of science and we all can access this things ask your friends from other university whether they can have this data or not whether they are accessing this web of science and other valuable data or not my library card number is enough to access this data but unfortunately many scholars they have not been taking advantage of within this product yeah, this jcr is there general citation report is there
master journalist was shown in your previous class also <laughs> suppose i gave a title of another journal nature journal impact factor is available journal citation report is available so everything is available to you what you need to do is to choose the right journal for extracting the information for your research and when you are polished enough to publish you can publish your the articles in particular journal so that you can have much more citation so i have shown you journal impact factor jcr and uh, what else g index h index i'll show you we have talked about the vidwan databases how the experts are chosen from vidwan databases see the g index h index h index and i10 index is available so data fetched by google scholar the h index on is available over here in vidwan databases so what is a h index what is i10 index what is impact factor everything you can see anything else if you want if you want to ask anything which we have left we have not covered any queries from the participant because our new uh, our next teacher has come so i need have to leave the class and i think i have covered all the topics if you have any queries from your side please come up online and offline both if there is no more question can we end the class any question from the online participants 92 participants are there on the online any question from your side ma'am it was very helpful no other question thank you ma'am okay so we are ending the session